Hey everyone, how are you? Hello, gentlemen. Hey. Hello, gents. Hey, gentlemen. Good to see okay. you again, Terry. Good to see you. Mm. Do, 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 Good to Kenny. see everybody. Kenny, you were suggested as the man whisperer. You're going to have to guide us through this discussion, man. Uh, I didn't even take, I whisper, I don't lead, I do it from the <laughs> side. <laughs> um, so I wonder who wants to be the person that reports back um, and takes notes and stuff. Anyone fancy it? I could take notes and report back. I can't say that I'll make it short when we go back, but um, I'll try my best. As it goes. Thank you. Good. Um, do we have, did anyone copy down the question? I, I have, I didn't copy it exactly, but I, what I took from it was, what do us as a group of men desire most, um, in synergy with women? And what do we believe that women desire most? And do we know how long we have? Eight minutes. Yes, you have eight, eight minutes. minutes. Yeah. And in... Just to add in, because I've got the questions written down, it's desire or value. Oh. So if you don't, if you don't want to go with a desire, you can use the word value. Okay. What do you value most or desire most as a group of men for a future synergy with women? And the second question is, what do you think or feel women value or desire most? I wonder whether the most efficient way would be for us all to, off the top of our heads, say what's there. And then after we've all had to say, so see where we want to go with the time that's left. Would that make sense? Anyone fancy starting? I'll be brave. Go for it. I, I, as a man, I think um, recognition and feeling heard and valued. So I believe when engaging with women, what I believe they want most from us is to be seen, heard, and valued. So it's, it's that recognition as partners and equals. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Anyone else ready to pay? Yeah, no, if we talk about the future, I uh, know. Um, for, from my perspective is maybe also from, or from a team perspective, I want to create teams where equality and where we really co-create. So co-creation, uh, and I know that uh, many women, they say that what they value the most is the communication and what they miss the, the most is communication itself. Just to, as you said, to, to be seen and heard. Uh, so that would be my, 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 my priority list so far, you know, this co-creation really co-creation that I feel uh, that we are not, you know, going against e each other. So this, this uh, uh, mutual understanding uh, of the, the, the focus and flow, the circle and, and the square, uh, because I feel uh, so far that most women I'm working with, they don't understand this. So I, to be honest, I'm very often frustrated because we, we don't really understand each other when we work in a team. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I would say listening is the most important thing. And I understand that a lot of men have said to me that women second guess. They don't listen to what we're thinking, what we're feeling. They kind of already decide what we're going to say. And I've heard from a lot of women that men aren't with what's going on, but they want to fix what's going on. Mm. So for me, it's both sides to be present and connected and listen. And they're not do anything until we've, we've been with what's going on and then something can emerge. Um, and on the men, fem female side, what I would seriously value is to know what's going on hormonally, because it seems to be a secret, whether it's male, male hormones or female hormones, male energy or female energy. And rather than hiding this and pretending it's not going on, very often it's these things that really affect people, male or female. So for things like this to be openly shared so we know what's in the room and we can all work together rather than putting on a good show. So yeah, tell me about your hormones, everyone. That's my bit. <laughs> Who else is ready? 
I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. So I think um, women seek independence, but supported independence, um, the ability to forge forge their own path in their own field in whatever way they want, almost um, tuning into that innate wild wisdom that they have. Um, and men either, well, I don't know, sweeping generalizations, so I won't bother. Um, so I, th I think there's that. I think they, it's easy to the point uh, Kenny made. I think they want honesty. Um, I think the ability to be honest and to speak openly without judgment, uh, that space. Then I think they want a sense of humor. I think, I think they want to be able to play um, and play safely. You know, no consequences, no expectations, just good old fashioned, you know, let's return to being children and, 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 and join in that experience. So that's my three. I'll dip in next, if that's okay. Um, just to share something with you that you may or may not be aware of, which is about how men and women understand one another or actually don't. And that's in um, nonverbal communication. So when you're in a meeting with women and men are usually talking first and women are usually not, women will nod at you when you say something. And what they're nodding to say is they understand what you're saying. When men nod at you, what men are saying is they agree with what you're saying. So men tend to think women are agreeing with them when they nod and they're not. They're, what they're saying is, I understand what you've said. What they're not saying is I agree with it. So when the meeting is finished because the women haven't spoken up, the men go away and think everyone's on board. Everyone's gonna get this done. And then a month later when they re-meet, things haven't got done because the women didn't agree with what was said. They were just nodding to say, I understand what you said. So there's one thing that I think helps in the, how is it we communicate better with one another? So for me, it's about awareness. The value for me is, is awareness. And the um, issue for women for me is how to help women understand men. We need to help us understand one another, but on the women's side, I think we need to help them understand how we operate. That's me. Thank you. Philip, that's awesome. I, I love what you just shared. And um, what comes to my mind is this whole idea of equality. For some reason, not here. Oh, poorly. Oh, sorry. So for some reason, um, in my mind, it comes down to equality. It seems like that uh, when women are in the room, they seem to feel like they are not an equal always and then not being heard. And um, that may not be the case in reality, but that seems to be like a perception. And so what it's all about for me is trying to bring them inclusively into the conversation on an equal footing. So they felt they don't only feel that they're being heard, but they're actually a part of the conversation on an equal basis. Um, and that they're not just there participating. So that, that I think is really critical in my mm. mind. Um, and in terms of uh, what I think they're looking for is I think they're looking for that level of connection. They're looking for the communication um, to be on an equal footing, that they're, they're equal participants in, in everything that's going on and that they feel that they can express themselves in any way that they want uh, without being judged, without being, you know, um, pigeonholed into something. So that's how I see it. I don't know if that helps. But. Yeah. Did you see the time come up from Angela? So yeah. who hasn't spoken, gave in quick. T Terry, you're unmuted. You're on mute, Terry. That's yeah. It. A quick one, um, since I got probably 30 seconds. Yeah. Following Boris, I agree with Boris. What's happened, I feel that over the years of uh, misogyny and patriarchy, women have now come from a place of a lot of fear uh, of being suppressed. So they're coming back almost with a vengeance. And that comes into all conversations and all meetings. So we need to figure out how do we rebalance that? Because otherwise, every single uh, interaction 
would be, oh, you know, man's going to look at me like this or think about me like this. So we need to find a conversation to turn that around somehow. Okay, Sunday in 20 seconds. <laughs> Anyone else anything to say before we're Zach back? Yeah. So, go oh yeah, go, go ahead, Mohammed. So, are, are we generalizing because we're seeing women and men? I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if there's an answer, but I, I wonder if there's yeah. any sort of gen generalization because not all men and women are, are thinking in the same way. So I'm just want to put it out there. I'd say both like, generalizing it absolutely and guessing. It, it absolutely <laughs> is a generalization. Mm. Okay. Were you going to say something else for that? Yeah, I, I was just going to say that I, I think um, the I statement with the team of men, right, is a generalization from my perspective. Yeah. So uh, I think at, what I appreciate is that men are starting to value uh, experience and masculinity, and we're starting to have enough of what the toxic means. So we're trying to see what it means to become and show up uh, masculine into the conversation. And we also want to present what does the female, you know, version of that look like so that we can co-create at a better power without trying to homogenize this thing as if we're going to all become this sexless blob, right? So I think appreciating the differences and valuing what we can co-create with both of us standing in our power is what will actually make greatness happen. No. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that was quick. It was I know. <laughs> juicy uh, though. We sorted the world out, Kenny. It's <laughs> <laughs> Be rude. Okay. Not hey, welcome back to the main room. Absolutely delightful. That was. We could spend hours and hours looking at this, but let's find out. Are we okay with uh, ladies first? Yes. yes okay. So, Alison. Robertson is going to review what we talked about. So listen carefully. Okay, hello everyone, thank you. So we discovered that we, in this instant scenario, are looking for quality and a respect to hear my voice, being listened to, but valued for um, our differences and access to a seat at the table, to receive, to have the ability to, for our information to be received, our information is, appears to be informal because sometimes it is of emotional value and being understood, we like to be understood as a compliment to um, the male's talent in a scenario. Understanding of a woman's wisdom, a respect for differences. We think we have that understood, but we would like um, to spot the similarities that we have a recognition of intuitiveness and intelligence, equality, um, that sometimes when we're on different wavelengths, it sometimes falls to that that's acknowledged, it's being heard, but then it always seems to fall back into our responsibility. I think I Thank you. Most of it. Thank you very much. So um, who is the spokesperson for men? Okay. Uh, Me. Yeah. So um, what we value as men in, in groups of men working with women is um, we want to be recognized, heard, and valued. Um, we want to form teams where we can cooperate and co-create, not come from a place of competition with women. Um, we also value listening. So um, men want to men understand each other and their nuances and we're struggling to discover how women um, communicate particularly in the nonverbal space we think that there's a key disconnect as to the takeaways that come from the room when we when we uh, co-create um, we we want to find a place for where the sacred masculine is rather than the toxic masculine, right? And not feel ashamed for bringing our power to the room. Um, but what we desire so that this can actually include women to the deeper level that we also yearn for is understanding. And what we believe women uh, are 
desiring or uh, valuing um, is that they want to be seen, heard, and valued in the room. Um, that they that they yearn for a deeper communication with us, so that we can understand what they're feeling, what they're contributing, how we can um, get a, a a better solution to the problem that we're working together. Um, I think that women want to openly share um, what's going on and find that there's a harmony in the conversation. Um, the term supported independence was brought up that, you know, women are going through this um, change of being able to ask to be in the room and not be it a request, but something that they've earned and that their wisdom is actually equal uh, co-creating with ours. So a place where no judgment, where they can, they can feel playful and co-create in a safe space. Um, again, understanding each other's nonverbal communication. Um, this, we, we feel that women want to no longer fear that they're not equals, um, that, that there is no fear in the conversation so that they can actually reach into their deeper um, awareness and intuition and contribute that to the room. And so the general thing is here that we like to appreciate our differences, um, that the greater value will come from co-creation if we appreci appreciate each other as, as mm -hmm. sacred complements rather than opposites. Thank you. Thank you, Adolfo. So both reviews are wonderful. And I just want to pick up on a story just to keep it, to take us into the next breakout. There is some thought that men appreciate women. And again, you can't always rely on research, but I think in the Barbara Annis and uh, John Gray books, they often say that appreciation is not heard in the same way by women. And women often say that they don't feel that they're appreciated, but of course, it's about the words that we use. And um, I was working in Malaysia. I had a group of uh, men and women from the Ministry of Women. And we were having a mixed conversation, which is what we're going to go into next. And the word appreciation was being discussed. And one young man, well, he wasn't, he was younger than me, but he was a father. And he said, well, I really appreciate my wife. And I said, I'm sure you, you, you sound really genuine. What do you actually do? And he just stared at me and he said, well, what do you mean? She comes in from work and she starts cooking and she looks after the kids and I go and sit down and keep out of her way. <laughs> so I said, so you really appreciate her, but what do you do? What do you say? And he, he had that kind of light in the headlights look and then this aha moment when he realized though he appreciated her he wasn't actually telling her anything that could let her understand that he appreciated her so i think often we we don't express ourselves enough and it is often felt that women need that appreciation maybe 10 times before they really feel it's heard i don't know whether the women on here have done it and it may be something that you are not sure of but I can remember one gentleman at a program I was running came up to me and said, oh, you mean I need to pay attention for longer than one, one set of words? I said, yes. He said, how long do I have to do? I said, how long can you manage? Can you manage 10 minutes of appreciation time with your wife? He said, yeah, I think I can do that. So it became a negotiated deal. So I think this is the thing is that we are all blessed to be wise here. How do we actually create that narrative? What are the words we actually say? So we're going to go into breakout groups with men and women together. And the question, uh, which I think, Angela, you are going to put into the, the chat is about our values. And if we can, what maybe would be, we can't do all of this in this time, but what would be one principle maybe, a guiding principle about real synergy between men and women. So the discussion in your smaller great breakout group with men and women together, remember everything we've said about listening and sharing and place at the table is what are our group top values? So you might have personal values, but can we discuss in a short time, in eight minutes, what might be the top three or five possible top values that your group want? 
And is there one principle that would encompass real synergy between men and women? Take it away, Angela. All right. So we are evenly distributed in groups of five and I will join the last breakout room. Uh, same timing, yes, about eight minutes, more like 10-ish. <laughs> okay, here we okay, go. Okay, that's great, 10 minutes, eight. let's do 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, okay. And again, somebody to Okay, hello. Hi, good, you're, you're not upside down anymore, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hello. Okay, and it's on mute. Hi, good. Hello, Alison. It's a great question, actually. Um, I, I, I must say, I, I not thought about it in that particular way, those words before. So um, so yes, uh, Alison, who would like to start? I mean, the first thing that came to my mind when I read the question uh, was was just communication, um, a deeper communication. Um, not just listening or hearing each other, but really valuing um, and understanding. And I know for myself, when I'm in a, a conversation with my partner, I have a tendency to want to, I'm a communicator, so I want to very much say my point <laughs> and make sure you understand it. Um, and I think what I would want to accomplish in that scenario is just to figure out how to value having a deep communication where both parties, I'm satisfied and he can hear me and I'm not overwhelming him and he can also feel safe to share with me. So uh, I guess a deeper communication it would be of value. Great. Um, I, I love actually, if I may, just what somebody said in the, in the group about uh, what, what you guys discussed about, you know, not being competitive, not seeing each other as a competitive um, and, and being collaborative and co-creative. And I suppose, um, uh, the, you know, the values and principles would be about um, seeing the person as a person, as opposed to, oh, that's a woman. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I agree, I believe, it's also with, with Alice, and I mentioned that in the other group as well, you know, this deeper communication. Uh, and uh, of course, to, to, to value each other's differences is also then to understand that, yes, uh, we men has, we, we have a tendency to explain why this or that, you know, and, and women, they just want to be. And um, that is also the difference we talk about here, the being and doing. That is the masculine and feminine working together. So, of course, when we value, that's, you know, so when you flatter a man, you know, you, you, you know, that means that, okay, you flatter a man, and then he is there, you know. And if you value the presence, and you are really present with a woman, she appreciates that, because it's more on this, you know, uh, non-verbal level. Um, but at the same time, I think this is, the, the, the listening uh, that was also mentioned, you know, that the, the, the listening is deeper listening. Um, the deeper listening is not just that I am informing you as a woman or the other way around. That is often the misunderstanding uh, come up. But it is then to, uh, to, first of all, we need to understand these differences and then we start the communication from there. It's not about information because that is, you inform me, I inform you, but the communication is interaction. And I think that's this interaction when we feel that, that that is the magic. I really feel, okay, you listen to me, I see you and we play. Uh, for me, play, you know, play, that is a, is a key word here. I think that it's each one of our responsibility to communicate our desires, our view of success, what we expect to give and get. 
um, as individuals, not as men and women, but because men and women are both on the same, you know, we're, we're on spectrums of masculine, feminine, um, and it's our responsibility to let people know. Um, women like to tend to think that, oh, well, if they loved me or if they, if they not just love, but, you know, if, if they cared, they'd know me. And be able to read minds. And, yeah, but saying, you know, what it is. And, you know, as Pauline was alluding to, the, the gentleman who said he valued his wife, he thought he was doing the right thing by getting out of her way. Hmm. But she sees it as, oh, you know, it, it, it's how it's interpreted. So the responsibility to see, to communicate what you see from your point of view and what you need. Because unless you put it out there, no one's going to know. Um, Philip? Yeah. Um, I told the guys a little story about what happens in meetings between men and men. So I'll share a different one here with you, which is what I call parallel communication. And on a flip chart, you just draw a little stick person each side of the end of the flip chart and then you draw an arrow going one way and underneath it an arrow going that way these two people are talking to each other they're actually not getting anything sorted out they don't understand what each other's saying because they're interpreting what's being said to fit the view of the world that they hold because they don't hold another view so for me the biggest thing that i think would shift our understanding is to know the difference between hearing and listening. And yeah. often, yay, go for it, go for it. Often, I don't think men or women understand it. And there's a very simple exercise that I've done with people where you have two sets of chairs facing one another and you set the thing up. So this is a false environment, but you have half a group who are going to sit and listen to the other half and the half a group listening, you say to them, after 20 seconds, I'm gonna wave my hand and I want you to show signs of not listening. And after another 10 seconds, I want you to get your phone out. I want you to look bored. I want you to show absolutely no interest whatsoever. And in the other group, they're going to talk. And I just want them to talk about a passion. So it's something they can talk about without worrying about it. And I tell them they're gonna talk for two minutes so that they're ready to keep going. And then of course you put the two together and when you show someone active listening, when you're really involved in what they're saying, they keep going and they feel valued. And when the other groups start to shut down and take no notice and then get their mobile phone out, what happens is the noise level goes down and eventually there's no conversation. And it's a really simple, quick, interesting way to then debrief it and say to people, how often does that happen in your life? You know someone is having a conversation, but are they listening to you? And so I think for me, it's, it is the difference between hearing and listening. And when we get that tuned in, I think we'll meet virtually everything everyone said here. Yeah. That's I, have to, I have to echo on after that. It's what I shared in the, in the women's ah, um, group is that because it's, it's a, such a trigger for me, I, I, I don't like saying someone saying, I hear you because it just feels like you heard the words that I said. I, I really want you to say, I listened to you. I really listened to what you said. It, it, it's just, it, I just thought it was a me thing because <laughs> um, it has such a value to me. I hear you, it feels dismissive. I hear, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I, I, Alison, I really listened to you. I, in any situation, work, parents, children, spouses, um, I think that's a, a key, component to um, deepening communication. Yeah. The other thing that tags in for that for me, Alison, is about asking people to catch themselves when they start to work out what they're going to say next mm -hmm. based on something they've heard. So you and I are having a conversation, you say something and I think, wow, I really like that. And while I'm thinking that you're still speaking and I'm not hearing that. So I haven't listened. So I've missed something. And it's another thing to say to people, just catch yourself doing it. Don't stop. Keep doing it. Realize when you're doing it, because once you know when you're doing it, you can turn it off. 
you can actually focus on the other person and focus on what they're saying without trying to think now I need to come up with a response or a question or wow that's a brilliant idea how can we expand this don't do that at the point the other person's thinking write it down just have a pen and pad and just make notes and focus on the other person because while you're focused and looking at them that's when you're showing you're listening so again the other thing for communication with me about hearing and listening is how do you demonstrate that you are listening as opposed to i'm looking at you but actually mm -hmm. what i'm taking in is the gray background and what looks like a guitar but it might not be and a lamp and you've got some something up on a wall uh, that's all there but i'm paying attention to it now rather than you and that happens a lot for me in conversation we stop paying attention to the words mm -hmm. and we start to look around and think oh hi robert's going past and you just mm -hmm. wait and that immediately says i'm not listening yeah mm -hmm. you know that's a really great and all great points and just to add to, for, to that what i what occurred to me was uh, quite often it's about understanding you know because it's about ego when we're when we're trying to better uh to sound mm -hmm. better than the other person whether it's another man or the woman now we don't listen to them we're trying to think of what to say it's about ego and it's about really working and you know doing the work on yourself maybe coach whoever it is to understand who you are what your triggers are what motivates you what your values are so that you don't have to be triggered by things like that and you can be present and listen because you're going to be curious that way so I saw Angela's note come up about we had two minutes about two minutes ago. Have we got someone who's going to feed back and give our top? I've taken some notes. I don't know. Angela, have you taken notes? <laughs> I can. I can do it. If hey, that's hey, my brilliant. Well done, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know from the men's session and you saw it from the women, suddenly it comes up and says you've got 28 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and you get I no can... choice. You're cut. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was nice chatting with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. I love See you. See you again in uh, the next round. <laughs> yeah, I suspect we'll be going back shortly. I don't know. Ah, here we yeah, are. No, here we are. Go. Ah, 30 second warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, just one thing before we leave. Uh, I think also this deep listening, words are the mind and the feelings and the emotions are the heart. So I have seen very often that when you read energy, I call it to read energy, we, we, we see and look what is behind the words. And I also remind you to look always behind the obvious, you know, look behind the obvious. See. It's so fun this, isn't it? I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Good to try. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That was a bit fast and furious, wasn't it? Um, oh, yes. this is it was mad. great, though. It was great in our group, for sure. Okay, Angela, where are you? Um, would you like to invite the groups to... And when you, whoever's reviewing back, do it very speedily so we yeah, can just um, the hear line. everybody. Yeah. With you, Angela. So we'll start with my group. We uh, voluntold Boris to be our spokesperson and he graciously uh, agreed. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I can articulate this well. So there's three principles that I kind of wrote down. One is listening and making sure that women are being actually heard, not speaking on behalf of women and letting them speak for themselves and actually be heard in the conversation. Uh, principle number two is humility and curiosity about others, uh, other person's experience and uh, being humble, uh, uh, sorry, other person's experience and understanding others' talents and values, being humble and curious always. And then um, third- Boris, is, sorry, Boris, could you please uh, um, speak louder or, or maybe sorry. closer to your microphone? Thank you. I right, apologize. That's okay. uh, I'll repeat that. So humility and curiosity about other uh, person's experience and understanding how, uh, what others' talents and values are. So being humble and curious always. And then allowing women to be empowered to share a difference of opinion and giving them the time to express how they feel about their experience. Okay. Thank you. Next group, Angela. Oh, it's me. Um. 
I, okay. We came up with that, uh, a deeper communication when collaboration was happening, uh, a deeper if, information, not just as I am to inform you, but to have it, that deep interaction and respecting our differences, um, not just seeing it as man versus woman, but seeing it as human to human. Um, communicating as individuals is our responsibility to share our thoughts, desires, and wants to the other person, um, to communicate what you see from your point of view so that the other person can understand. Um, a, a parallel, not having just parallel communication, but shifting, I hear you, to I'm listening to you and I'm understanding. Having an active listening, because when you have active listening, the person feels of value. Um, aware when it's uh, your responsibility, when you're just sitting there listening to respond and not taking the information in. Understanding that sometimes that's your ego, just sitting there waiting to chomp on the information that the person's sharing with you as opposed to allowing it to affect you. And we ended with it, that deeper listening is actually reading the energy and looking behind the words that are being said to you. Excellent, thank you. So we have two groups left, uh, Paul's group and, and your group, Pauline. Okay, Paul. So I guess in our group, um, the value started with dignity, i.e. seeing each other as human beings in the room, uh, regardless of our gender. Uh, the, the need for a, st a strong quality relationship with the self, that we are all responsible mm -hmm. to know oneself before we try to blame the others for the lack of communication in the room. Um, that we need patience and curiosity for others and ourselves. Right, so that we can go deeper and understand what it means to own both the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine. So that there's a discussion there amongst the genders understanding what it is to be a female and also have masculine energy that they can sit in power with. And how, what does it mean for a male to also be sacredly masculine, but acknowledge in himself the female energy that allows him to co-create and so forth. Um, Show empathy for each other and mutual understanding of our emotions. Um, understanding that uh, women are potentially way more capable of understanding their emotions and communicating them. And that men have not had the permission to understand deeper. And so to communicate at that level, um, understanding how we feel, interpret, categorize, and communicate more emotions uh, will help women help us in that process. Um, the word honor came up as if we can honor ourselves and each other um, as human beings rather than human doings, understanding that the doing comes from me understanding what I am being. Um, and if I can come from a place of honoring myself and honoring others, then the conversation just magically becomes uh, positive and synergetic. Um, being together in the sense that we're in this together and we're all trying to figure out how this works better. Um, we need to take the wisdom from the female's innate ability to care for the earth. And, you know, they're really the only beings in, in our species that understand uh, two hearts is one, right? So men have to acknowledge their place in that conversation and, and honor and acknowledge what it means like for for the side of us that brings life, um, you know, how we could learn that from a larger perspective. So basically balance, not equality, right? So we, we don't want to come from a perspective that women and men are equal. That's like putting us in a blender and trying to get a homogenous blob and that's never going to work. But balance where we actually honor and stand in each other's power can actually get a conversation that's more elevated. Excellent. Thank you, Adolfo. That was brilliant. And in our group by uh, Kenny. Um, so let's see. We weren't so gender specific. We were more about individuals showing up and telling the truth. Um, and telling the truth is telling the truth about how we are in the moment, how we feel in the moment, 
what's going on, including our hormones, including our tiredness, including our health, so we can actually bring ourselves to the party and be true rather than putting on a good show. Um, I guess equality, by, by me anyway, is assumed, but it's listening, so everyone is heard. And rather than being heard and then doing something, it's being heard and being seen and sitting with. So before the doing comes the accepting, comes the being together and the trusting each other, including, you know, the authenticity and the vulnerability to say, I don't trust you right now, or I don't believe what you're saying right now. So we know where we stand with ourselves and with each other, and we can all grow together. So rather than putting on a good show, it's truly showing up and let's see what's between us and let's see what wants to grow amongst us. What did I miss out? No, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by everything that's been said today. I, I hope you're all going to nod on that. I'm, it's quite an emotional roller coaster for me. I feel like I'm on the white water rafting as, as I, I speak. And um, I'm hoping that the boat is going to come down to a place where I can just paddle slowly. Um, I think what we've shared is phenomenal amounts of wisdom. And one of the things I've often talked about is a wisdom waterfall is how now do we share this with uh, communities that are not as aware maybe as we are. I found it very important what Kenny said in our group was that if, if somebody does feel able to say, well, I don't trust you at the moment, then the other person needs to listen and inquire as to what that is about as opposed to take umbrage. So I think that's where we are. This is what this group is about. We've come now to the last eight minutes. Um, uh, first posted up here in the chat there are different types of learning. There's the activist, the theorist, reflector and pragmatist. A lot of you will know all these things. We're all taking on board what's said in different ways. Um, I'd like to know from all of you if, if you felt that this was a really good way of creating a discussion and the narrative as starting. I thought it was fantastic, so I hope you all feel the same. Did you enjoy the small groups and the bigger groups? We needed the, we always need that that element, of, you know, what are men thinking, what are women thinking, but it's not to separate us, it's to enable us to come together. Um, and one of the things we would like to share, Angela and Philip and I, we've been talking about what is the potential for what we're doing here. Everything that's been said, we'll gather, we'll honor, we'll report back to all of you. But how do we take this out to the wider world? There is, um, how many of us here? Four, five, 20. There are 20 people here. There are another 40 people who've been on various of these sessions. Alan and Scott in Australia couldn't make it today. It was like in the middle of the middle of the night. I know Terry is on and Kate are past midnight well. So we want to find ways that we can have maybe more groups in different time zones. And uh, Angela is working with me and some advice from Paul about how we can create a platform, an actual network platform where we come together and we share ideas around the real synergy for men and women. If that feels good to you, that's, that's where we would like to take this. We haven't done it yet. Our goal is that we become an influence hub for people out there and they could be in corporate business, in entrepreneur business, they may be in associations, they may be anywhere, who's saying, so what is this new narrative about? What are the guidelines? What are the values? What are the principles? What does it actually look like? And obviously my pattern is that we, we can use the gender dynamics intelligence as a lens to understand our feminine, our masculine, our, our differences as we tackle other diverse issues, the issues of, uh, of race, of culture, of sexual orientation, of disability, ability, all the things that we want to tackle out there. Let's get it together first with our male and female, our balance, our honesty, 
and our differences within our own genders. Um, men don't always get on with each other. Women don't always get on with other. We, we've got all sorts of things to sort out, but the goal is in a world which seems to be, to my mind, crashing around us and being very polarized in uh, arguments and violence. We have an opportunity to stand as a light, a shining a light of this narrative. This is only the beginning and we've now got five minutes left. And I would like, if anybody would like to make a quick comment on that, we have five minutes. I'll, I'll just jump in and echo what you just said, Pauline. I think uh, men and women that are having this conversation right now have an absolute responsibility to figure out how to show up for that energy rather than just say the words, right? Show up in the room with what you've learned, learn from others and continue the conversation so that it doesn't become stagnant. And it'll, you know, the millennials will catch on to the fact that people with experience are actually looking to light that beacon brighter and, and Absolutely. get something to work for. And so thank you, Donna, for sharing your story in the chat line. And we all bring our energy and love to you for what was not a good situation. Anybody else want to make a quick comment as we have four minutes? Yeah. So, um, Suprana. Yeah, I just wanted to, to say, you know, being on, on these groups and having this conversation today, I was actually also emotionally overwhelmed at how we, we all want the same thing. We want the same thing. And it's, and it's, and it's just, so hard for us to do that for each other and that's what we have to remember and I love what somebody said here in the chat that you know we need to model um you know this way of being out there in the world and that's that's the thing we need to do is just to be that way with others and uh and you know and yes hopefully have other groups and conversations that are deeper thank you Kenny um I I totally echo for me it's not only let's not talk about it, let's be it, but I would say be very clear um, about second guessing men, men and or women, uh, because otherwise we're second guessing, well we talk about people second guessing, but it's being it. And um, a really important thing I feel is when people are being it, don't glorify it as if it's something strange and unusual, normalize it, make it the most normal way to be because then it's passed on so discreetly as this is the only option. Because surely the oneness, the care, the transparency, it is the only option. It is, it is. Terry. Yeah, can I just add, my perspective tends to be uh, from the youth because that's what my foundation does. And I feel this narrative needs to go to the young people because they are going to form the next generation of people who are not programmed yet. Because if we don't do this now, whatever we're doing at adult level will not change the next level of young people. And that's my sharing. Thank you, Terry. And I think that that is a really important point is this wisdom waterfall has to go both ways, if you like. I was working with some ideas with my two grandchildren and um, listening to their wisdom. It's about listening and as, as um, Kenny said, don't guess anything. The, the three rules in the magical conversations are no judgment, no anger, and no coercion. And implicit in that is no assumptions. And I think one of the things that I really take out of today is this, this whole thing is, it's okay to say anything and own it. So the value cycle, which is fundamental to our work is that if I value my me, I value each one of you, we create a valuable community. And as we've all said, we just now got to be it, do it. And as we, we come into time now, I really am hugely grateful to all of you for being here. Um, I can't tell you how important this is to me and, and my vision for the, the world that I want to create with you, which is world harmony. And why not? Um, nothing small. <laughs> Angela, is, is there any last things that you would like to say as my brilliant breakout host. <laughs> oh, it was my pleasure, first of all. 
And yeah, just it was to reiterate, just a call to action of, of spreading this through your channel to your work in the world as it, the early adopters of the magic conversations, Pauline. Um, yes. Even just with that, um, it's you know it's how we create this um, this community. So I suppose my last question to you all: Are you all willing to make this community work and make the narrative work out there? Maybe if you, you can all put your thumbs up, I could try pressing the button on here. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 Oh, Jimmy, there he is. <laughs> wow. Oh, I can only do one thumb because I'm pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> I so appreciate you all. We'll, we'll report back to you all. We'll come together again in a month's time. We'll maybe set up stuff for different time zones so that you don't have to be up in the middle of the night. I really want your commentary coming back, any feedback, any stories, anything that you want to share. I'm just hugely, hugely grateful. I believe that we can start making an influence in the world and people will come to us because they know this is right. Pauline, Thank you me. already are starting. Thank, Thank you, Pauline. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Good to everyone. And make sure you Ciao. keep in touch. Keep in Ciao. touch with each other. We Thank will. you.